had a little lamb His feet was white as snow, yeah But everywhere the child went The lamb would go, yeah Followed her to school It broke the teacher's cool But every now and then That day at school Tisket, task baby A green and yellow basket I sent a letter to my baby On my way I passed it Task, baby, a green and yellow basket. I sent a letter to my baby. On my way, I passed it. Mary had a little lamb. His face was white as snow, yeah. But everywhere the child went, the lamb would go, yeah. Welcome to a cup of conversation on BRT2 TV. And my guest this week in the BRTK studios is musician Ed Cesner. And it's great to have Ed here. So we're going to have lots of fun listening to great music on today's programme. First of all, Ed, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, I think, I can't remember how long ago we first met. You came onto a radio program with my colleague Denise Phillips yes. on the main event. Yes, correct. And I think, was that two, three years ago? I think it's about... Two years now? Yeah. yeah, must be, I mean, at least two years, yeah, at, least. at least. two years. And I remember you coming in with uh, Barry Stewart, yes. an expat musician mm -hmm. who has now unfortunately left the island, but he um, was a great musician and a, a teacher of guitar, and he had his own bands, and I think, were you part of Snakebite at yes, the time? Yes, I was the um, rhythm guitarist of Snakebite. Uh -huh. um, also in the band was Adam Nedim. James Gray, yeah, and yeah, Barry Snakes. That, that was the four of us. Yeah, it was yeah. the four of you. Yeah, Snake yeah. White. He was Snake nicknamed Bite. Snakes. That's why it's called yeah, Snake White, I think. Yeah. Let's go back now. Um, Ed, you're a Turkish Cypriot, yes? Yes, half Turkish Cypriot. Yeah. And uh, where were you born? Uh, I was born in Watford, in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, I, I lived there until I was about eleven. Right. I moved over here with my family, my mo my mother and father, um, and I've been here ever since. So. Since the age of 11? Since the age of 11. So a bit of a different culture. Yeah. yeah I mean, you came here when you started probably secondary school, yeah? At yeah, just, just started secondary school. Yeah, yeah. so a big change yeah, in your life. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. And do you, remember your, do you remember life back in the UK? Um, <laughs> vaguely, you know. I've been here so long now, and Cyprus has become such a big part of my life. And yeah. Obviously, as you're growing up, um, especially f your, throughout your teenage years, they're like the biggest years in your life. Yeah. The, the years that make the most impact on you. So I do have memories still of uh, the UK, but not so many, you know, not, not, so many. not as many as I made here. Which, of course. Yeah. So where did you move to when you came here? Where are you living now? Um, when I first came here, I moved to Alsenjag. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm currently living in Lapta with my own family, mm -hmm. uh, my wife and my two children. Um, yeah, and hopefully move somewhere else someday. Who knows? Who knows, yeah. So I know, I mean, like I said, two years ago, you came to BRT, you were a musician, you were a rhythm guitarist in Snake Bite. Yeah. Had you always been in music? And how did you get involved in music? How I got involved? Um, <laughs> Tell us the story of how Ed Sidney became such a, a wonderful musician, a great guitarist. It's just meeting the right people, I guess, you know, uh, the right inspirations. Growing up listening to um, bands like Queen, especially, there was a big influence on me. Um, 
and then I always wanted to play guitar. So I started, I picked up the guitar when I was 16. So here in North Cyprus? Yeah, here in North Cyprus, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't start playing guitar until I was 16 and um, I joined my first band. I actually played bass guitar in my first band. What band was that? It was the Outlaws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, I vaguely remember them as well. Yeah, do you remember? I remember that name. Yeah, the, the Outlaws, going years back now. Um, I stopped playing bass with them, then the bass player left. Oh, sorry, the guitar player left. I'm the bass, I was the bass player. <laughs> uh, then I moved to guitar again. Uh, I was still at home, I was playing, practicing guitar, because guitar has always been what I wanted to do, you know. Um, and that's it, from then on, just playing the guitar, you know. So at the age of 16, I mean, you're <coughs> obviously at high school then. Yeah. And did you take, I mean, how did you get involved with the guitar? Why guitar? <sighs> did you take lessons? No, I never you took didn't. lessons. I always wanted to take lessons, but uh, I c we couldn't afford lessons at the time. So, like most kids these days, you know, the internet is, you know, you've got everything on the internet. YouTube. So you looked up? Yeah, you've got videos, how to play guitar. <laughs> That's it. And but most of my experience of, um, of playing guitar comes uh, with people I met who are also musicians. I've learned off them also. So I'll go and play with uh, one band, and obviously there's some guy in the band that's uh, much better than I was, and I would learn some things off him, and keep moving up and moving up. And yeah, yeah, it's mostly on-hand experience I, I learned uh, playing guitar. Um, which is a good thing because you interact more. It's easier to learn of someone than of someone on YouTube yeah. by watching them, seeing how they do things and playing with them. And it's, it's like that all the time, even now. Um, even now I'm, I'm playing at the moment with Naim Coral there. We do an acoustic um, duo together. Mm -hmm. And obviously he's one of the top musicians on the island and playing with him is a great learning experience for me. I pick up lots of things from him. Uh, lots of techniques uh, about music and um, how to play songs and he's yeah he just keep picking up things all the time he never stopped learning never stopped learning so you learn from other people around you yeah you know just picking up yeah training yourself yeah got your acoustic guitar strumming along as they as, as most young kids do yeah yeah do you think maybe 16 is late for or is it never too late to learn it, it's never too late but the earlier the better yeah you know, I wish I would have started playing guitar at an early age, maybe 10, 11. Yeah. Um, That's when I think the, the age of where yeah. the you know, youngsters sort of get into that type of yeah, thing. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And into, yeah. you know, strumming. But obviously, I, had never, I never had the opportunity before. Yeah. Um, so at 16, lots of people start at 16, you know, and it's, it's a good age because you've got a fixed mind on what you want to do. Yeah. But also, learning at an early age makes it easier to play, you know. Maybe you, can, you could have got the formal training before. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you taught yourself, so you, you caught up very quickly, well, I'm sure. You, yeah, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, no, you're <laughs> a fantastic musician. Thank you. Did you ever think, OK, I'm going to be a musician? Is that what your dream was then? When you were 16, you started yeah, learning from it. YouTube or whatever from <laughs> other people. Is that, you said, this that, is my life, I want to be a musician? Exactly, that, that's yeah? what it is, yeah. That was it. Before that, was like cars, I want to be a race driver, I want to do this, you know, do that. As soon as I picked up the guitar, I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do my whole life. You know, mm. this, is, this is my life, music. And it's still like that now, you know. Uh, I dedicate my life to music. Yeah, I, love, I, I love, love anything to do with music. Yeah. It, it shows. I mean, you know, the passion shows. I know that, um, I mean, uh, you came today with a good friend of ours, Roland Eilich, yeah. who is a presenter on our radio yeah. station, Brighton National. He, t plays the, uh, he presents the Blues and Rock program. Yeah. And he's always raving about all the great musicians here. And he really said to me, you've got to get Ed on the program. And so I'm really glad that you're here oh, thank today. You. Thank you very yeah. much for, for coming. Oh, I would like to thank Roland as well for inviting me. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine and he always comes to my gigs. He supports other musicians. He's great support for all the musicians in Northern Cyprus. So it's very different <laughs> from you learning at home, maybe you know, playing the guitar in your, in your bedroom, to actually yeah. performing. Because I know you've yeah. been with a few bands, haven't you, over the years? Yeah, I've been yeah. before, Many Snake bands, Bite yeah. and the other yeah. bands that you've been with. Um, do you enjoy performing to the crowd out there? That's, that's why I do it. Yeah? Because you know, that's, what, that's what it's about, you know, performing in front of a crowd, uh, showing what you've got, you know, um, putting on a show. That's what it's about in the end, you know, I don't, I, now, these days, I don't practice much at home, you know, because I'm gigging a lot, um, 
but you know, you get a lot of practice on stage anyway, um, especially when you're playing with a band, um, interacting with each other, learning of each other again. Yeah. Even if it's a drummer and the bass player, you still learn things from them, and that's that's my practice now. Yeah, and that's what I what I want to do. Just keep performing live. That's that's it, really. It, I mean, it, well, that's everything, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you don't need to do it anymore. I mean, you're gigging, like you say, it's quite... Yeah. A, a, um, it sounds very easy, doesn't it? You know, you go out there and play, but yeah. you've got to practice, you've got to you, get... Yeah, exactly, yeah. You've got to practice to get the band together once yeah. a week, practice with the band, practice the songs, um, prepare for the gig, write set lists. Um, then when you, get, when you get to the gig, you have to set up. You have to go early, make sure everything's working all right. Mm -hmm. uh, do your performance. And after your performance, you have to take everything apart and load the car, go home. <laughs> late, lots of late nights, especially in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. And especially it's difficult when you're traveling far. Yeah. When you're close by, it's not so bad. But when you're traveling far from like, for me, like um, I sometimes play in Famagusta. Mm -hmm. I live in Kyrenia and the, the journey there is tiring. Yeah. Some bars, they don't start playing music until 11 o'clock. So you get there about eight o'clock to set up. Start playing at 11, you finish about 2 o'clock, then you have to pack up. So you're home about 4 o'clock in yeah, the morning, exactly, 4 or 5. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Maybe you stop at a, uh, have to get something to eat quickly. Yeah, a chorbaji. Yeah, a chorbaji, yeah. yeah have, a, have a bit of soup. Yeah. <laughs> I know the lifestyle, I wish, I wish yeah. I knew the lifestyle. But, but um, yeah, so it is very difficult. And plus, you know, you say you've got a family as well. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you have to balance. Exactly. Um, I try to at least. <laughs> yeah, home life with gigging. I mean, yeah. it is your passion. You yeah. don't want to, obviously, you're still very, very young. You don't want to give it up. But um, it, over the years, because I mean, I, I remember, you know, you coming in and being part of the band and, you know, you had the chance to speak, all of you um, in Snake Bite, um, being tutored or, you know, being mentored by uh, Barry Snakes then. Um, it is good to be part of a group. I mean, do you enjoy working with other people, and now that you're with Nime, you said you were yeah, together, yeah. just the two of you, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, which one do you prefer more, being part of a big group or maybe more intimate, like two of you? Uh, I or even being solo, do you perform? I, I don't like playing solo. No. I don't. I don't enjoy it because uh, it's boring <laughs> for, for me. <laughs> you know, I don't mind it now and again, but playing with someone, you get to interact with each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's great having company on stage with you. Um, but. Playing acoustically, just me and Naim, and playing with the band. There's obviously there's different. Um, well, how can I say? You got to do different things when you're in a different position. Aren't yeah, you? exactly. Be... I enjoy them both. You yeah. know, I really enjoy them both. Uh, obviously, with um, the band, I get to play my electric guitar, which I prefer playing because you can do anything you want on an electric guitar. Yeah. Whereas with a um, acoustic guitar, you got to be more laid back. Um, I always think of acoustic guitars as very sort of like you know when you're playing very sort of like intimate, <laughs> relaxed, people, yeah. you know, like yeah. you're playing to, to friends one on one. Exactly, yeah. With an electric guitar, you're up there and you're yeah, performing. You, you, you rock it, you know. You rock it. Yeah. So you, you, you enjoy both. I enjoy both. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, especially working with Naim, he's such a great friend as well, and we had to have a good time all the time. Yeah, it's, it's good. So are you happy how? Over the years, things have progressed. Are you happy with yeah. what you're doing at the moment? Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. You know, if I look back to where I was and where I am now, I was like, well, you know, I've actually come up quite a bit, you know, with my playing abilities and the people I know, the musicians I know now, and playing with other musicians all the time, jamming with them, mm -hmm. getting calls from random musicians going, oh, can you come play with us? I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, it's good, you know, it's a good feeling, yeah. You also uh, sing, we just heard you uh, perform, and we're going to hear you again a couple more times throughout this interview. Um, do you like singing? Yeah, I, I, well? I do enjoy singing. Um, that's what I do mostly in, in my own band. Um, I have a band called Stingray. We've just formed uh, late last year. Oh. Um, and we're a free piece, and I'm playing, playing guitar and singing. Uh, and also we're, with Naim, when I'm doing stuff with Naim, I'm singing also. Yeah. Um, he sings, I sing, we both sing at the same time. Because so, that is yeah. even more pressure, isn't it, to, to sing? Yeah. I mean, it's all right when you're playing the guitar and you're, you know, you're doing your bit, yeah. but to sing as well and perform, it's even more, well, it's probably more rewarding. You have, you know, it you're is. enjoying it more. Yeah, it is. Did you ever have any um, formal singing lessons at all? No, I didn't. Not at all? No, no. 
I wish I did. <laughs> You're very good. I mean, yeah. seriously, I think there are a lot of talented people here on the island. Oh, and, they are. You know, they are, yeah. lots of great bands, lots of great musicians, singers, talented people. And yeah. you find each other and you know, you, you, you come yeah, together. Exactly, yeah. I mean, yeah. Cyprus is a small community, so yeah. in the end, you end up knowing ev everyone, especially all the musicians, you know, and become like a big community, mm -hmm. which is it's, it's a, nice, a nice feeling, you know. Um, meeting up with other musicians, playing with them, and just getting to know each other, going to other musicians' gigs, supporting them as well, and they come and support you. Yeah. It's, it's a great community. Good, good friendship between everyone. Yeah, exactly, yeah. No rivalry, really. There's no, a no. For, I no. think there's a, there's, a, there's a place no. for everyone, isn't there? Exactly, uh, you know, the, there's no rivalry, and there shouldn't be, really. You should, no. of course, all musicians, they, we should support each other, especially mm. in an island like Cyprus, you know, mm. it's such a small community. In the winter, it's hard to get work, especially with bands. Um, you know, we support each other. Excellent. Um, yeah. I know you're, you're doing a great job out there. You mentioned before um, briefly about you know you were inspired by rock bands like Queen. For yeah. Instance. Yeah. Are you so? Do you, I mean you know aside from the hair, which is a, a rock yeah. hairstyle, um, is that what you enjoy the most? Rock music. Yeah, I, I enjoy all sorts of music. I enjoy rock, reggae. Um, jazz, believe it or not, really? uh, classical music, all sorts of music. I've, you know, I, I enjoy, especially all guitar music, you know, because guitar. I just love the sound of a guitar. So, I mean, you know, I, I couldn't really think of you as um, a reggae or a, yeah. a classical guitarist, but maybe if I had, if I had dreadlocks. Yeah, if you had yeah. A dreadlocks, yeah. in, like I can see. But you prefer? What do you prefer most? If someone said to you, "Okay, um, see for us now," which I have done to you. Yeah, you yeah. Know, um, you gave us a bit of rock. I mean, is that where you go? More? Yeah, more when it comes to me playing, personally, I'll go yeah. more towards rock, you know. But you don't mind any other... No, I, I love listening to it, I love playing it also. Um, yeah, but rock is basically what I go towards too, yeah. And it is a very popular style of music here, isn't it, on the island? I yeah, think. it is. A lot of people, a lot it of is. the audience, like, a, you know, all the classic rock Yeah, tracks. the classic rock, yeah. That's why our, our Roland is so popular yeah. Yeah. Uh, with his blues and rock programme. But, yeah, I mean, I like, I mean, rock is, you know, it's universal, isn't it? It's, 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 um, it's always going to be popular, I think. Yeah, exactly, I think. yeah. Well, do, you, do you, I mean, who do you, who do you um, base yourself on? Is there any idol out there that you really want, that you really think, oh, God, I want to be like that person? Uh, to be <laughs> honest, uh, you can have lots of idols, but... The person I really want to be is myself. Yeah. Uh, because I don't want to be like, okay, I want to play exactly like Jimi Hendrix, for example. You know, I idolise him. I idolise Steve Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, Brian May. I can gather their knowledge, of how they play their styles, put, incorporate them into my playing, and try and develop my own style of playing. Um, that's what I want to do, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the best way, you know, you're not going to get anywhere if you're going to try and be exactly like, for example, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. You have to be yourself, that's the most important thing. Be something new, fresh. Um, yeah. Are you always, because um, when you're a musician and you've got, you know, all the classic music that we all know and all, you know, start doing a bit of Queen, a bit of this, a bit of that, do you also try and keep up to date with what's going on musically now? Yeah. With current, I mean, are you always trying to increase your, you know, your repertoire of music and... I'm, I'm trying to. Um, there are some great new modern rock bands, which I love listening to. Uh, I've tried playing some in the past before for, with my band, but the problem is out here, no one really knows the new rock yeah. songs. They want all the classic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so he's still stuck playing the classic stuff, which I do enjoy, especially yeah. the, the 70s, late 60s, mm. early 80s, that kind of stuff, uh, which I really love as well, you know. Yeah. Um, but there's lots of great bands out there, modern bands, modern blues bands, uh, rock bands. Yeah. So you're always keeping an eye out for what's going on musically. Yeah, exactly. But of course, everyone loves all the, the classical stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The, all the, That's all what the we grow, grew up with, yeah. our parents grew up with. And yeah, something to relate to. Speaking about parents, what do your parents think of, of what you're doing now? Are they happy that you you chosen this path in life? Yeah, I guess so. Do they do they support you from the beginning, or was, uh, it, difficult, or was it difficult to be um, to be a rock star at the age of sixteen? The thing you yeah, come I, on think at the, I think at the beginning <laughs> it was a bit like you know what are you doing? You know, <laughs> get, get a proper job. Yeah, exactly. You know, 
that's mostly the case. Um, but I think later on they realise that you know I'm, I'm earning quite a bit of money. Yeah. For and you're talented. Well. And yeah. Hopefully. Just, hopefully. Yeah. No. Of course. <laughs> you know. You know. Our parents are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the fact that you know. Um, if you're in another country, maybe in America or in the UK, yeah, opportunities. You try and you know get a, a gig somewhere, or you try and get a record deal. But in all Cyprus, they probably think, you know, what are you going to do in all Cyprus? Yeah. But actually, I think here, um, all the different bars, restaurants, locations where people are, you know, into all this type of music, and they want to have a bit of intimacy with the with the musician, yeah. listen to live music. I think it's quite popular, here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. There's and always a gig going on, isn't there? There's always exactly something. always something going on, um, but about getting records and all that you know now these days you know you've got the power of the internet yeah you can record an album here with your band post on the internet you know get yourself popular on the internet that's all you need now to make money you know to yeah. get famous youtube spotify yeah itunes put it out there and you that's can it. do it all yourself you don't need a record label or label anymore cut out the middleman yeah exactly you can with the power of the internet the band can do everything themselves well, we're going to cut, uh, catch up with you a bit more after. Let's have another music break with okay, you. Cool. And um, we're going to chat with Ed Cezanel, who's my guest on the programme today. So, Ed, take it away. Let's hear from you oh, again. Cool. seems to be the same Always playing a different game Sometimes you win Sometimes you lose No matter what It's bad news How can I go on any longer Each day seems like a roller 
coaster ride to me Where did I go wrong? I can't quite remember Why can't the world just let me be? Fantastic. The excellent Ed says, and if you just joined us on BRT2 TV, my guest on A Couple Conversation is musician, guitarist, singer Ed says, and Ed, and uh, Ed, fantastic. I mean, really, you know, the music takes us away. I'm sure you enjoy it when you're performing yeah. up there, you know, at any of your gigs around the island. We'll talk more about your gigs in a minute, but I want to go back to, you know, you taught yourself and you didn't take any formal lessons. You said you had two children, yeah? Yes. How old are they now? One is five, one is seven months now. Okay, so when they grow up, will you encourage them to be musically? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. I'm already encouraging one of them. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's got everything available to her at the moment. A drum kit in her bedroom, guitars, and yeah. you know, whatever is mine is hers, you know. Yeah. But I don't want to push her onto no. it. You know, uh, you've got to let children Choose, them, choose themselves. Yeah. You know, if you push it onto them, they might get like, uh, you know, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, it feels like a chore. Yeah. So it, it's got to come naturally to them, I think. Maybe that's why, you know, at age of 16, it came naturally to you then. Yeah. That was the right yeah. time. You know, I've life. always wanted before to play the guitar or any instrument, but I never had the opportunity, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But now you're giving opportunities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, want, I want the children to have what I didn't have. You know. Would you ever teach music? I did. I did teach guitar for a while, um, but then I just haven't found uh, time yeah. to do so anymore, especially with the family and um, the gigs coming up. And if anyone out there, any parents or any youngsters out there who are musically inclined and they want to do something, would you encourage, I mean, would you say to them it's never too late? to, I mean, obviously, you know, if you're in your 30s, it's a bit too late to start learning now, but, you know, if you're a youngster out there, like you, you're a teenager, would you say, you know, go for it, just pick it up and yeah, just try definitely. and Yeah, why not? Strum. You know, definitely, any age, you know. Um, actually, the other day, I had a friend of mine, um, he's in his uh, early 50s, and he just wanted to start picking up the guitar. And I said, yeah, you can do it, you know, you just have to give yourself to the guitar. Mm. Um, this devotion, practice. Uh, some people think, ah, oh, I'm too old now. It's, it's not like that. You know, I've heard stories of people starting playing an instrument at, in the late 30s and now they become virtuosos. Uh, wow. Yeah. And some people play, start playing in their 60s and they're going out gigging. Yeah. So it's never too late? It's never too late, yeah. You just have to have your, your mind in it. You know, you've got to give yourself mm -hmm. the music. That's the most important thing. I think I would say that, you know, all schools should encourage a child to play an instrument. I think, you know, that yeah. side of the, you know, the creative side of, yeah, of our minds should be encouraged more. Don't you think? It's yeah. always, you know, lessons. It's like maths, English, Turkish, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, music should be, I think, don't you think? In yeah, schools? definitely. Yeah, because you can, you can actually do something with music. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a physical form you can take hold of and, and, and use it. You know, you can pick up an instrument. Mm -hmm go to a bar, play some gigs, um, join choirs, um, and all, all that kind of stuff. You know, you can actually do something with music. It, of course, you can do stuff with maths and physics as well, you know, but... But music is... Music is more physical, I think. Yeah, more with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, let's find out where you are. If someone wants to, to see you perform live, can you tell us, can you run us down some of the, the places where we can... Uh, actually... Yeah. If, the easiest way to find out where I'm playing is by just checking me out on Facebook. Under Ed uh, Sesenet? Ed Sesenet or Stingray, uh, the Stingray band Cypress. Your new band that you've, yeah, you Stingray, formed. Yeah, Stingray or Nime Corrida. You can mm -hmm. check out our Facebook pages. You can find our, our dates of when we're playing. Because, you know, we're moving around all the time. Um, at the moment, we're playing every Saturday at Sardinia Bay mm -hmm. in Karshiaka mm -hmm. at 3.30. That's our set gig every week. But also we get gigs coming up in Famagusta, Nicosia, um, and all sorts of places. Uh, for next month, actually, on the 10th of uh, February, uh, my band, Stingray, we're playing at Demolai Bar in Famagusta. Mm -hmm. 
And then the following Saturday, we are playing at Neverland in Nicosia. Right. So, but it's, it's it's not a regular thing. It's always you know uh, different dates all the time, changing yeah. around. So we can't say every. No, I can't. You know, apart from so, apart, apart from, from Sardon Sardinia. Yeah. Yeah. And that's with Naim. That's with Naim. Yeah, Naim Coral. And so, what type of set do you do there then at Sardinia? Uh, we do we do a whole um, mixture of stuff. You know, uh, rock and roll, rock blues. Uh, we do lots of our own material as well. My material, Naim's own material, instrumental stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we just like to mix and match it, Do, play what we feel sometimes. Yeah. So, so you've actually written music as well yourself? Yeah, yeah. The last song I just played was one of my own songs. Sounded like as if it was, a, you know, something that I knew from an album <laughs> somewhere. But yeah. yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So you'd like to share your own... I mean, that must be even more exciting to, to put your own material out there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And be able to respond. Do you ever think about making... I mean, you said make an album and put it yeah. onto YouTube or anything, yeah, or Spotify, yeah, yeah. Or whatever it is. But, I mean, um, do you actually think of making a, a proper yeah, album yourself? Yeah, I have plans this year, hopefully, if all, everything goes to plans with, oh. with the band. Um, we're starting writing our own material. And once we've got a few songs down, um, we're planning on going to a studio and recording them. And hopefully getting them published and get an album out. Yeah. All, all in time. All in time. All in time. Watch your space, as they say. Yeah. Is it a different um, Ed in Stingray as it is to the duet with Naim? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And because in Stingray we're going more um, psychedelic. Really? Yeah, psychedelic rock. Ah. Uh, quite. Uh, Doors. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> Doors, uh, Hendrix, Cream, uh, but also our own material. Yeah. So it's quite trippy. Oh. We do. Yeah. And what's the response been like from the crowd? I mean, are they? Are, do you have your own little groupies now following you wherever, wherever you go? Yeah, we do have lot of, <laughs> we have we have lots of people asking when we're playing next, and they always follow us around, yeah. which is nice to have. You know, great uh, little team of people following you all the time. So yeah, but like I said, we're a new band. We haven't done many gigs at the moment. Uh, we've only done I think three gigs together right. so far. Uh, but we don't want to gig too much because we want to focus right on writing our own stuff. Yeah. Uh, we've got a few gigs in February booked. Um, we're at the moment working on a, s a new set list to mm -hmm. uh, play at those gigs. Um, yeah. When you're looking for a gigs, when you're asked to play, I mean, are you looking for what type of location do you enjoy playing at? Is it a bar? Is it a restaurant? I don't know, a hotel? Or, um, I mean, who, who, can, who can, you know, ask for the services of Stingray? I mean, wh where do you like to play? Uh, we like mostly bars, yeah. uh, music venues especially. Yeah. Um, restaurants, I don't think we'll go down well in a restaurant. Yeah, I don't no. think we, you got, you've got to be, you know, watching the band, not sitting down eating yeah. dinner. That one-to-one... -one yeah, one-to-one. Yeah, one yeah, that's, that's what it's the about, the interaction yeah. with the audience, you know. Uh, and at a, at a bar, we can achieve this. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're mostly looking for, bars, music venues. Um, so if a, a bar owner out there is watching and wants to maybe hire you, are you again open for yeah, definitely, for different yeah. locations, different yeah. gigs? Yeah, definitely. Around yeah. the islands. Yeah. Have you have the, the means to travel anywhere? Like yeah, say. definitely. Yeah. Although it's, it's it'd be a long drive from from Malta to get there. But, yeah. But if you're doing it for the love of music, then it's it's enjoyable. Exactly, isn't it? I enjoy it. You know, the money might not be good, but it's my passion. You know. Yeah. Makes you happy. Exactly. Keeps you. you know, if I if I if I. Uh, have a good gig, I enjoyed the night, and we played well, you know. Money is not important to me then, you know. Of course not. Just, just maybe enough money to get home and <laughs> petrol money, <laughs> that's it, and that's yeah, all right. You cover your expenses. That you, yeah, <laughs> you know, just get home and yeah. get enough petrol in the car. You don't have to pay extra money out of your pocket to get to, to yeah. you know, one place to another. Yeah. But, so you are open for... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And does it get any um, busier or slower at different times of the year? Yeah, definitely. At the moment, it's quite slow. Yeah. The winter, definitely. Uh, because most bands, they play in outdoor venues because indoor venues are quite small and yeah. can't um, uh, take a band, you know, because it's too loud, obviously. Yeah. And the drums and the bass and the electric guitar. Uh, so in, in the summer, literally flat out five nights a week. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> On top of that, a day job as well. So Where's your day job, by the way? I'm a diving instructor. No. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. So we now learn that. So you're diving during the day. I'm diving during the day. During the season. Yeah, during the season. Yeah. And then you're playing at night. Playing at night. 
and waking up early again in the morning for diving. <laughs> to go diving. And do you ever see your family in between that? Uh, yeah, not much, so much in the summer. That's the problem. The summer I'm flat out. Yeah. Especially last summer was, uh, was a busy one. really hard, yeah. So enjoy your time with your family now while yeah, you can. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And then, <laughs> in the summer, I'm gone again. <laughs> in the summer, you say goodbye to, yeah. to, to Ed yeah. in the summer. But it's been really good to, you know, have you here in the studio. Okay. And is it only just Facebook that you've got? You're you not on uh, Instagram or Twitter or? On it, Stingray is on Instagram. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have Instagram. You can look us up, Stingray Band Cyprus. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, I think that's it at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So people can send you messages there. And, yeah, you, and exactly. you're always posting where you are. Yeah. And obviously, before the gig, you might say, and tonight or this weekend, yeah. I'm. Exactly, yeah. Or this evening, I'm here, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So they can follow you there. Exactly. And they can um, maybe contact you there as well. Yeah. I'm sure you're very approachable at the, at the venue. You know, go and say hi to, to Ed yeah. at the venue. Do you get people coming up with re re requests, you know? Here's a oh, no, yeah, lots, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you think, oh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. is this? What is this? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, all the time, all the time. Within reason, you can play uh, maybe a few requests. Or yeah, definitely, yeah. Yes. You've got a great repertoire, obviously. Yeah, you know, you know I've, over the years, I've, I've, been playing, I've been playing, what, eight years now? You, you learn a lot of songs in yeah. eight years. Are you good with, like, you know, playing by ear, listening yeah, to that, music? That's, and just... that's mostly how I learn, you know, by yeah. listening, you know. And that, I think that's the best way of learning, because you um, develop your, your ear yeah. with, with music, you know, listening, picking up different notes and... It's amazing because actually I hear about, uh, about this type of way of learning from a lot of musicians. I think many of the successful, uh, successful musicians are actually learning that way by not getting formal training, but actually yeah. just... Yeah, just listening. Just listening and doing it by themselves. Yeah. That's what you have to do, listen. Amazing. Yeah. It's really good. But it shows, you know, you're a very talented guy. Yeah, and you. so, um, you know, I think uh, everyone who knows you enjoys your music. So you're, you're with Naeem at the moment yeah. and with Stingray. And who knows where you'll be next in the yeah, future? I know you've been knows. working with many different people, yeah, but exactly. um, you know you're very talented. So thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you very much for having me. Thank Good you. luck with all the future gigs. Thank you. And we're going to see you there. So yeah, hopefully one day. Yeah. I mean, um, my excuse is I have a young child. Yeah, I have eight. two. I have two. I know you have two. But <laughs> do they come to your gigs? Uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> in the summer when there's no school. In the summer, yeah. In yeah. the summer when they're outside, they can go f right far away so yeah. it's not too loud for them especially for the baby yeah yeah but the, so once they're old enough they'll be following you around yeah, probably exactly <laughs> and carry my guitars for me and got well, to teach them what you know teach them to do all the good things yeah you know? exactly got to teach them young but um, we'll be looking out for you ed thank you very much and uh, it's a pleasure to have you here in the studio a big thank you to roland also yes. for bringing you in today and um I want to hear, we want to hear one final track. And can okay. you tell us, is this one of yours again? Yes, I'll play one of my own songs. What is your inspiration, by the way, for music? Oh, I mean, don't... In, everything, you know. Is it, you know, unrequited love? Is it, I mean, what's your type of, what, I mean, is it things that you've gone through or do you just make it up as you go along? Uh, mostly things I've gone through, yeah. Yeah? Like the last song was a bit depressing. A bit depressing? Yeah. In a bad time in your a life, A bad time, it? you know. Uh, it's called roller coaster, you know. My life, what life is a roller coaster, up and yeah. down, you know. But isn't that the best way, though, isn't it? Real life experience, yeah, exactly. the best songs. That's how you should write songs. Yeah, yeah. from the heart. Yeah, this next song I'm going to play is. Um, I actually wrote this when I was in the army. Um, obviously, this song is called "Without You," so it's dedicated to my wife. So, were you in the army while you when you were married then? Yes. Right. Yeah. So you went in to do national service. Yeah. So this is so this is very uh, romantic, very nice. Yeah, but it's more it's it's upbeat. It's an upbeat uh, song. But it's a nice tribute to her, isn't it? Yeah. What's your wife's name? Ingrid. Ingrid. Okay, Ingrid. so Ingrid, very lucky lady, Ingrid, yeah. to have a song written uh, in honour of you. Should we say while Ed was away? She must have missed you as well. Whilst you missed, yeah, we're missing her. So we're going to end with this. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, once again, Ed. Thank you. Very Give much. my regards back to your bands and to Naim. Yeah, we'll and see be. you around. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, here is. Ed says no for the last time on A Cup of Causation. Until next week, see you round, but keep tuned in.
feel so without you, without you, without you, without you, without you. Here we go now. Why do I feel this way? Coffee and cigarettes every day. Why do I feel like I do? I feel so lonely without you. Without you. Without you. Without you. Without you. Why do I feel this way? Coffee and cigarettes every day. Why do I feel like I do? I feel so lonely without you. Without you. Without you. 